Today I'm going to talk about the different patterns of inheritance. We briefly talked about Mendel and um, dominant mm -hmm. and recessive traits, but there are also different forms of inheriting traits. First we're going to talk about incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance is when there is a blending uh, between two different dominant traits. So instead of just getting red or white, there's a middle blend of getting pink when you blend the two. So if you look at the P generation, you have the red and the white, and the true breeding parents, when you blend the two at the first generation, you'll end up with pink flowers, and after the F2 generation, you'll end, with, end up with 25% red, 50% pink, and 25% white. For the Punnett square of incomplete dominance, you would have, uh, for the second generation, you have big R, big W, big R, big W, then you have big R, big R for your 25% red, you'd have two big R, big W's, and then you'd have WW, which gives you that 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. Another kind of dominance is called codominance. This is when the heterozygote appears to have both traits. So when you combine the red and the white, you have red and white present. So with big R, big R, you'll get red. With big R, big W, you'll get red and white. And with big R, big W, you'll have um, red and white. So if you look at the true breeding parents, you have the purebred generation or the parent generation with homozygous red and homozygous white. When they're blended in the first generation, you've got 100% red and white. The F2 generation, you'll have 25% red, 50% red and white, and 25% white. Codominance in multiple alleles. You have equal dominance um, between, in codominance, you'll have equal dominance. So when we're talking about human blood type, You've got A, B, and O. A and B alleles are codominant, while O is recessive. Um, these genes are, um, A and B are representative of proteins or antigens that are on the surface of the red blood cells. So if we look at the genotypes and phenotypes for individual, for um, human blood types, for someone with A, they either have I superscript A superscript A, or I superscript A, I superscript A, or I, I superscript A little I. Um, for B, they'd have I superscript B, I superscript B, or I superscript B little I. Um, for AB, they have I superscript A and I superscript B. For someone with O, they have little I, little I. Um, so there are also traits that rely on many different genes. Those traits are things like your skin color, your height, your weight, eye color, intelligence, and behavior. So that means there are many, many genes that are going to code for one specific trait. For example, um, human skin color um, depending on how many of the genes you have present determine how light or dark your skin is. So it forms this bell curve, um, gives you a wide range of skin tones. Something else that can affect your genes is also the environment. So depending on the environment, your phenotype is going to be altered. Your genes are going to stay the same, but the expression of your phenotype will be slightly different. So hydrangea flowers, based on the pH of the soil, uh, determines their color. Your skin color is, as long as you're not albino, is determined by how much sun you're getting, so that vitamin D. Uh, the more exposure you have to UV light, the darker your skin is. And then on the right, there's the arctic fox. The, um, in colder temperatures, he'll be white, and as it begins to warm up, he'll start molting his fur and his brown fur will be um, seen. So while you can have codominance and um, 
incomplete dominance, there's also traits that are linked to your sex genes. So depending on if you're male or female, may determine whether a gene is expressed or a trait is expressed or not. So we know in humans, we have 23 pairs. Our 23rd pair is going to be your X and your Y. And sex links traits um, Sex chromosomes have other genes on them, so the X chromosome can have things like hemophilia, which is when your blood doesn't clot, as muscular dystrophy, which is loss of muscle control, and red and green color blindness. So you can see green and red as shades of gray. So in sex-linked traits, when you're looking at the trait, you're looking at not only the allele, so the big H, but you're also looking at the sex chromosome. So that's why there's a superscript when you're looking at um, sex link traits. And if you can notice that for a male, they're only getting that allele or trait from their mom because they only have one X. Whereas with females, you're going to have two Xs. So in this case, um, for hemophilia, if you have a big H, you're not going to be effective, and since it's a recessive trait, you have to have the little h present. So the male who's shaded in red on the lower right corner is affected, whereas the female who is a big H, little h, is going to be a carrier but not affected because um, the big H is going to dominate over the recessive trait. Um, not to get confused, but dominant does not always meet in the common allele. For example, polydactylism um, is a dominant allele, which means you have multiple, or you have poly meaning many fingers. So we have five in this picture. You can see there's an extra limb, um, and that's the dominant trait. The majority of us have the recessive trait, so um, it is always better to have more. So polydactyl is individuals are born with an extra limb or toe. The allele for greater than five fingers is dominant and the allele for five digits is recessive. So the recessive allele is more common than the dominant and only one in about 500 has more than five fingers. So 499 out of 500 are homozygous recessive and will only have five digits. Here's an example of an individual who had an extra limb um, Hound Dog Taylor, obviously an artist back in the day. And that is our patterns of inheritance. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask, and I will see you in class.